yeah, no, I can pick it up. Uh, like, I don't know, like, ten per package or something like that. I don't know why it's so few. I'm just sort of throwing out numbers, so. I, maybe the pork industry is greedy? I don't, I'm not a ham expert. I, Mom, I, Mom, I'm not a ham expert. I'm not a ham expert? I'm gonna have to call you from the store, okay? I, I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'll love you too. The old holiday get-together, huh? I'm spending this holiday under my desk with my iPad and a bottle of old crow. Man, you mean a real Van Orton, you know that? Oh, what? You know, man who hates celebrations and just wants to work all the time? Van Orton, from the game. What game? The game, you know, the 1997 holiday film directed by David Fincher. I can't believe you've never seen the game. What are you, Quan... Z's? Quan Zonian? It's not a thing. It's the one with the, you know, the old guy, the old codger who learns to be charitable and enjoy life after he gets haunted by the ghosts of his past, present, and future. My family and I watch it every year. <laughs> this is just a Christmas carol. You're confusing a 90s thriller with a Charles Dickens novella. Uh, what? Sir. No. Yeah. What? I can't believe you haven't seen the game. It's a holiday classic. Okay, so. Michael Douglas plays Nicholas Van Orton, a millionaire, lonely banker who lives by himself in this big empty house and makes all of his employees work stupid hours. But on top of that, he's a cold-hearted penis man who just avoids all of his family's attempts to try to reach out to him. Your ex-wife? I know who it is. Take a message. He hates charity. The museum doll. No. The Fitzwilliam Botanical Annual Fundraiser. No. And he's obsessed with the bottom line to the point where he's basically a monster to one of his oldest employees. It's to ask me to step down. You promised to meet the projections and some dollar sixty shares what you said. I don't think this visit comes as a surprise. Everything you're describing just sounds like Ebenezer Scrooge. Huh? There, there's, there's no way you don't know what I'm talking about. You're, talk, you're saying the game is a Christmas movie, but they don't mention Christmas in the movie once. So you would have had to have known that there's this connection between the game and the much more popular A Christmas Carol. Tom. So Van Orton's brother signs him up for this elaborate game on his 48th birthday, which just so happens to be the same age their father was when he committed suicide by sailing off the roof of the family house with the Olympic gold medal for traumatizing your children clutching his teeth. Furthermore, the father is presented as being basically the same kind of guy that Van Orton has grown up to be. The father's death and age is representative of the loneliness that he now feels. So consequently, when Van Orton's game starts, it's marked by the discovery of this fake scary birthday clown laying outside of his house, directly in the spot where his father he, he, splat, you know, where he died. Beginning of A Christmas Carol, Scrooge sees his dead business partner's face in the knocker outside his home. We're talking about my thing right now. Already, Van Orton's been visited by the painful past that made him the man he is today. He's confronted by his wife. Happy birthday, Nikki. He's pranked by his brother. What's his name? A Mr. Seymour Butts. And then finally reminded of the death of the emotionally distant father. I just thought this might be difficult for just you. Just another birthday. Because of your father. That's right, he was 48, wasn't he? I hadn't really thought about it until now. As the game progresses, he meets a woman named Christine, who represents all the waitresses and drivers and all the common folk who he interacts with on a daily basis. But Christine forces him to actually start interacting with the rest of humanity. And he realizes that despite their lower social status, these grimy market goers are actually more happy and alive than he's ever been. He also sees his old employee, who despite all of the misery that Van Orton has laid upon him, is still happy and surrounded by a loving family. You're just describing stage two right now. Is that the strip club on third? It's the f***ing part in A Christmas Carol where the ghost of Christmas present shows Scrooge all the common folk in the marketplace. He sees Bob Cratchit and his loving family. It's the name Tiny Tim, ring a bell, Tom. That's the strip club on third. Just, just do your thing. Okay. So in the end, Van Orton finds himself penniless and alone and in a grave in Mexico. He's being forced to see a world that he's no longer in, a world where he's powerless and ultimately forgotten. So you could say that he's seeing what's yet to come? Yeah, exactly. That's actually a really good way of phrasing it. You should probably write that down and use it in something. Something good. Anyway. Van Orton's finally seeing what his life is going to be if he continues living the way that he does. Lonely, 
powerless and forgotten. But not before thinking he shot his brother and then being tricked into committing suicide. It, it all turns out to be part of the incredibly dick-faced rich guy LARPing experience that his brother signed him up for. But amazingly, instead of punching his brother directly in the throat, Van Orton realizes that he wants to spend the rest of his life making meaningful connections with his friends and family. And the film ends with him actually going out to that longtime employee that he wronged and trying to make amends. And then the employee's kid pops up and says, And God bless us, everyone. No, why would that happen? Because you're describing the plot of A Christmas Carol and you f***ing know it. And I just want you to say that you know it because otherwise you and your family are insane for thinking that the game is a Christmas movie. I say, man, every family has their own traditions. You and your family eat ham and watch A Christmas Carol. Me and my family stand in people's driveways dressed up like clowns. Different strokes. But hey, while we're talking about traditions, Merry Christmas, buckaroo. Holy smokes, you got me a gift. I sure did. Thank you. What is this, a key? Happy holidays, you humbug. You said humbug. So you, you know the movie, in the, in the story. I was right. Yeah. Happy holidays, you dopes! Hey. Click the like button and subscribe if you forgive me for calling you dope just now. And then leave a comment on what your favorite Christmas movie is that's not actually a Christmas movie. Right, like, like Die Hard, but not, don't say Die Hard because that's the one that everybody says. Just right. say something like Jaws Revenge because that kid gets eaten while they're all singing the first Noel and that's all I can oh. ever associate with that song now. So give us your version of that story that I just said. Give a real life story when you were eaten by a shark. Yeah, just the most depressing Christmas you ever had. Tell us. Hmm.